Hey everyone, this is Jason here from Grand Slam, and this is another Secret War Journal, issue number 18. I don't know if it's an issue. Episode 18. Uh, so we're trucking along here. Things are starting to wind down. I've probably said that in the last, like, three weeks, but, I mean, literally, like, things are, stories are concluding. There are some stories that are, we're still in the middle of. So let's just get right into it. Uh, just a few books this week. Uh, this is Secret War Journal number, I believe this is number five. These books have kind of been progressively not being good. Uh, it's getting worse and worse, I guess, would be the thing to say. Uh, this story features two stories in here. As I've talked about, there are many short stories. Uh, the two stories in here, one of them is about, it's like the night nurse, but it's a nurse and she's doing stuff and uh, it's, it's not really memorable. It didn't make a lot of sense. She's running around with a gun. She's the girl on the cover. Uh, I really couldn't get into this one, this particular story. Uh, the second story is about Millie, the model citizen, who's an obscure Marvel character. And she's kind of inept at like trying, she's like supposed to be like a representative of doom trying to recruit people. She's really inept at it because she's just so nice and cute. And so that's, that's kind of all that happens there. And it's more of a funny story in there. So they're, they're kind of, you know, they're getting to the bottom of the, the, the peanut butter jar. On some of these stories. So that was Secret War Journals number five. Age of Apocalypse number five. Number four. Uh, I think I think this is a concluding issue. If I recall. No, there's still another issue this one. Uh, Age of Apocalypse has been just a really tough one for me. To get my mind around. Mostly because I'm not. I, did, I kind of stopped reading during the Age of Apocalypse. There's just so much chaos. Uh, the best part about this book is all the covers are connected. If you take all four issues, five issues, they're all connected into one image. That's probably the best part about this whole book is the cool cover. Uh, but in this one, they are the they left out the the, the legacy virus uh, apocalypse unleashed it, and so it's been messing up a lot of people. And then it killed apocalypse. Who knew? So <laughs> it's kind of a little wacky and confusing and. There's some stuff going on, but that's uh, the long and the short of it is it kind of backfires. And, you know, I was really hoping I, I've talked about this. I thought this was going to be more of like a really cool apocalypse book where it's about his realm and his understanding and using his four horsemen. And it's just a bunch of garbled goo chaos. So not one of my not one of my preferred titles. Uh, another one that's just really chaotic was Spider Island issue number four. Uh, this is not a concluding issue as well. There's just so much crazy stuff going on in here. Bug people, like Goblin Eye, you know, there's an infection of the Green Goblin, turns all these heroes into weird looking people. I don't know. It's <laughs> the, You're not getting a lot from me this week about this stuff. These just were not, this is just not an interesting as book. It's so confusing. Uh, I don't know. Spider Island, it's just not as cool as I wanted it to be. Um, gets better from here, folks. I, I promise I'll get a little more excited about what I'm talking about. Uh, Spider-Verse issue number five was actually really cool. This is a concluding issue. Really cool team. Uh, this team, it looks like it's going to exist in some form in the all-new, all-different Marvel. Uh, you know, we have basically Spider-Gwen. I didn't think much of Spider-Gwen. She's cooler, much cooler in this one. Uh, she teams up with a Captain Britain, and then I believe this is... Uh, well, we have a, a, that's a, that's a spider woman and we got a spider ham. You know what I'll say in this book? Spider ham, I've never really cared for. He's a pig version of Spider-Man. Spider ham is actually really cool in these books. Good comic relief. He kind of reminds me of like a Howard the Duck type of character. I wouldn't be surprised if we started seeing more spider ham, which we already kind of have because spider ham was in the whole Spider-Verse story as well. Uh, so He's an interesting cat. In this one, they basically, they defeat Norman Osborn. He's trying to do, he's got a big plan. Uh, there's, it's on multi-levels, multi-arena, multiple arenas. The good guys win. They kind of take care of him. And at the end, you have, you know, you have the concluding page where you're going to see all of these, sp these spider men, spider women from all over the, the universe. Finally, like at the end, they stand triumphant and they're like, all right, well, we'll be here to protect this place, spider, you know, this spider verse, this particular domain so that's kind of cool um you know and so and then that hints towards like well maybe there's gonna be a whole title about them now depending on how well this did 
so there's some neat stuff in here. Uh, spider ham is a big plus. So I hope you feel like spider. I don't know if you agree with me. If you like spider ham, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, Armor Wars issue number five. This is a concluding issue. Um, so they're the, the good guys are kind of, we realize that Stark is the bad guy. We've talked about that. He's the leader of the domain. He's bad. He's behind all of the bad stuff that's happened, including we find out Kirio Shiro, who is kind of like he was trying to nurture her, and she's a creative genius, and he, he we find out he killed her parents. He killed Ben Urich, who was a Spider-Man, and he did all this bad stuff, and he's just a bad guy. He has to go down, and he does. Uh, basically, the, the, the Iron Man team up to beat him, to beat him down, and it, it's, you know, the good guys stand triumphant. It has a really cool conclusion, uh, and Kirio Shiro is kind of the hero of this book. Now, who is Kirio Shiro? No one knows. She's a, I mean, I think we talked about her before that she is from, she's kind of like from a plot line of a pregnancy from another character that Tony Stark had been with at some point. Um, but she's never been in a character before, so this is kind of her book. Will she appear in the all-new, all-different X-Men? Or X-Men. All-new, all-different Marvel? Who knows? Uh, so Armor Wars concluded. Tony Stark went down. Hopefully there's a cool version of Tony Stark coming in the all-new, all-different Marvel. Because I like Tony Stark. A lot of people don't like Tony Stark. They think he's a jerk. But let's be honest, he's really cool in the movie. And he's just a great character. He's a futurist. I have nothing nice to say. I love Iron Man, so... Uh, the Infinity Gauntlet, issue number four, really cool book. Uh, in this one, you have, I think this is, you have the Guardians of the Galaxy finally meet up. So you have the Guardians of the Galaxy and these Novas, and they meet up, and there's all, you know, discussion about gems, and then they team up, and they meet up against, uh, Warlock, and, uh, Warlock has the green gem, which is the soul gem, and so, uh, the leader of the Nova Corps, the mom, if I can find, I don't think I can scan and find her name. Um, do, 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 do. Anwen's mom, whatever. I, I can't remember names. I'm really bad at that. Historically speaking, I just, I, I figure out names eventually. But um, so she's been assembling the, the Infinity Gauntlet. And so she runs into Warlock and Warlock has the Soul Gem. The Soul Gem is just super powerful. And he knows how to use the Soul Gem much more than she knows how to use all the different gems. So they have a sweet clash where they battle. And it's hard to beat. Warlock is awesome. Like, you can't... I mean, if he has the soul gem, he's the master of the soul gem. He knows how to use it. It's a vampire gem. It steals souls from people. It's kind of a very powerful tool. They have, like, some serious battling going on. There's just crazy shenanigans. Drax shows up. Drax is, like, still hunting down Thanos. Thanos was kind of with him. But he's not in most of this issue. He kind of, like, took it back. Who knows where he went. And then at the end, he shows up. And then he gets the gauntlet. So he's got the gauntlet and he's got five gems. Things are about to get real. So is this the Thanos from uh, Secret Wars? I don't think so. But uh, Thanos is able to, he, you know, he, you know, he, he defeats Drax because he's got his, he's got the gauntlet. I mean, things are bad. So the next issue, this story is going to conclude. Will they defeat Thanos now that he's like assembling his gauntlet? I think the Novas and the family, the family Novas are going to, triumph over him they have to for the sake of the universe guardians of nowhere issue number four this book is getting pretty exciting uh in this one uh i can't actually remember exactly what happened oh yeah they run into this really cool kree character as we know there is no space in the domains and so this kree character comes from nowhere and or <laughs> nowhere comes out of nowhere literally and uh, has an encounter with Gamora and Angela. And she doesn't really speak any language that we can understand because she's Cree. And they start, they have an encounter with her. And and so Gamora is trying to learn and they, they basically end up killing this Cree creature. And so that's not good. But, uh, you know, we we'll start to discover that Gamora knows stuff. She like sees beyond the illusion of what's going on with Secret Wars. And I'm trying to, I'm scanning through here just to remember if I can recall what happened. Um, so there's lots of cool battling, lots of great art in this book. This is a cool book. This is a very cool series. At the very end, Peter Quill shows up. 
to kind of complete the Guardians of the Galaxy. Because it's been everybody. You have all four members except for him. And then he shows up. And it's the we find out it's the Peter Quill that's actually from the Raft. The same Peter Quill from Star-Lord and Kitty Pride. So for whatever reason, Peter Quill has been an authentic Peter Quill. He's like the only character from all these books that's been the same character. That's like actually from another, you know, from the 616 and he's cropping up in here. So he shows up in the end and things are about to get pretty real. But this has been a pretty cool book. I um, definitely recommend this one. I like anything Guardians of the Galaxy. Guardians of Nowhere is a good book. So check that out. Last but not least is House of M number three. I love House of M. I really do like the story. It's been done very well. Uh, Hopeless, Dennis Hopeless, and Colin Bunn, and Ario and Nadito. I think Nadito is the artist. Colin Bunn, and they do a really good job of encompassing what happened with the whole House of M story. Um, and this one, basically, you see Namor and Quicksilver's plan is finally coming to fruition. They've taken over the House of M. You know, Quicksilver's in charge with power by, you know, powered by Namor. They think they killed Magneto, but they didn't. He escaped with Polaris, and now they're kind of teaming up with the humans. And like Magneto loses his powers because Hawkeye shot him with an arrow, so he's kind of like he's depowered down. So he has to figure out how to get his powers back in order to restore his realm. But Magneto has life in him again. He's not as bored as he used to be because he was kind of getting bored as the the, the ruler. And so now he's going to team up with these people, the, these these humans, to kind of, you know, to kind of rise up against Quicksilver. So that's always going to be fun. And uh, we find out that they'll have like a whole army of uh, Deathlock people. They're like part Deathlock, and that's really cool. There's like a whole army of them. So they're going to team up, and they're going to over. They're going to try to get over. You know, they're going to try to get over on old. Uh, on Quicksilver, and Quicksilver's convinced Scarlet Witch to team up with him. So, this is a cool book. House of M. I loved House of M, the original story, so this is a really cool book. So, that was it for week 18. Uh, will there ever be another Secret Wars book? Who knows at this point? It's a mystery uh, wrapped in an enigma. Uh, they recently just announced that they're, <laughs> they're soliciting issue 9 of Secret Wars, which was supposed to be an 8-part book, so... So apparently, like, Jonathan Hickman's still writing, they're still doing art. So the miniseries, like, the actual story of Secret Wars is going to go on way, way, way longer than anticipated. And they're going to pass all these stories that don't really have any relevance on the main story. So these videos are just kind of me finishing up a project that I wanted to do and tell you about all these different stories. So... Thanks for tuning in. This is Jason from Grand Slam Sports Cards and Comics at 1730 West Eisenhower. Let me know what you think. Please leave comments. Share this video. This has been a, a, a pretty much a, a summer-long, fall-long log just about Secret Wars books. So I hope you've enjoyed it, and thanks for tuning in.